Well, friends, October is finally here, and we have made the cutest ghost sweatshirt. So I thought I would take this time to walk you through how I embroider a sweatshirt. So first, I'm using peel and stick on my fast frame, and I'm going to flip the sweatshirt inside out. I'm going to iron on some fusible no-show, which is what I like to use on most all my um, garments. So just trimming it to make sure that it fits the way that I want it to. So with this, you just have to kind of go back and forth and make sure that the um, iron adhesive is really bonding to the garment. Then I turned it right side out and I am finding that midpoint. I use painter's tape. I feel like that's the most helpful for me. And then I get it on the machine and make sure that it is lined up with the center of my fast frame. Then I need to rotate this one. So it's going to actually stitch upside down, but that's because the item is upside down. Once I make sure that it is going to sew where I want it to, I can remove the painter's tape and then I can start the process. So for applique, I use Heat and Bond Light, and Heat and Bond Light, I've talked about it before, but this makes really crisp edges so you don't have any fraying with your fabric once you cut it. It also allows you to bond the fabric to the garment, so it's, it's a really important, um, Thing to use in my opinion I when I started embroidery I didn't know to use it and you can just tell in the quality of um, how far we've come so for this sweatshirt in particular we're using a one inch checkered pink and white fabric and then a small gingham pink and white fabric so I got a little bit more of the gingham and then we've got the one inch checker so I'm going to start with white thread. So you see here, this is a little trick that they taught me at the sewing store. If you tie the end to the previous thread, then you don't have to re-thread the whole entire thing. You just kind of pull it through. So once I get it all threaded, which my embroidery machines do have threaders where they will pull the thread through the needle for me, but it just seems to be a little bit faster for me to do it myself. So. I got that on there. So this one is going to stitch a placement stitch first, and I had to actually skip over to the next to get these two ghosts to stitch the placement because I knew that I wanted them to be this pink and white checkered. I think I said that I was going to do more of the gingham, but that's not true. <laughs> the gingham goes in the middle. So pink and white checkered. I wanted it to make, I wanted to make sure it lined up. Do you see how they have like that pink line in the middle of each of these ghosts. And that was the reason that I skipped ahead. So now you see how clean the edges are and that's because of that heat and bond light. So then I go around, trim really close. This one is going to be what is called a zigzag stitch, I believe, once it's all said and done. So typically applique does a placement stitch so you can see where to place the fabric and then it does a tack down stitch to hold it in place and finally excuse me finally it will finish so there it goes again yep and there's that zigzag and I just chose to stick with the white thread for all of this because even though they're pink and white I thought the white looked really cute for the ghosts so here again we're doing a placement stitch. We're gonna get that pink and white gingham. And I decided to do it diagonally because I thought that would look cute. And then I didn't have to be so particular with the lining up the lines and straight up and down. So now we're tacking it down and I will trim it. After I take it off the machine, I'm gonna trim it away. Again, those clean lines because of our friend Heat and Bond Light. So we just, Clip, clip, clip. I love to use these little needle nose spring scissors. I buy like a three pack on Amazon and they, once they get um, sort of dull, I just replace them. 
for me, they work the best. There have been times when I have cut through a garment, which is a super pain, but most of the time I can be careful enough to not have that happen, but those are my favorite. Okay, so we're changing to pink because next we're gonna start to stitch the features of the ghosts. So these ghosts have cute little rosy cheeks. So we're doing that in a um, lighter pink. And then I also have black for their eyes and their mouths. So again, using that easy trick, tie it together, pull it all through. You can see here, I'm gonna thread it. There we go. So now it's doing her little eyelashes. And then it'll hop over, I believe, to the next one. And again, that was something that I had to kind of control. Oh, no, it didn't. That was something that I had to kind of control on my own, um, manipulating the design to go back and forth because applique tends to stitch like pretty slowly. Now this is the lighter pink inside the little bow that's gonna be on this one. And I ran out of bobbin, so I'm replacing that. All right, and here we go. Changing thread again. Finishing that little bow. So, so cute. And I only did, I believe, white, black, light pink, a little bit of a darker pink, and then purple for this design. So it really didn't use that many thread colors. And my husband always says, I'm surprised you didn't use your multi-needle for this. But honestly, I like the way that the single needle machines will stop every after every um, stitch pattern because then it makes it gives me a chance to really work on what I'm trying to do and make sure I don't miss a step. You can program stops into a multi-needle machine, but I'd rather run my multi-needle machine with just stitch designs because that way I've got like, again, more of an eye on everything. So now we're doing her little ghost, or excuse me, her little witch hat, which is so cute. I love this purple, especially with this pink. It's like, like a periwinkle sort of purple. And then it's doing those light pink inside of the bow and then the darker pink of the bow. And then it will stitch the light pink little circle inside. And some people to this design have added boo or they've added, you know, something Halloween-y, but I just decided to keep it with just the ghost design. So I'm picking away all the peel and stick as much as I can get. It's a little bit more difficult with the zigzag stitch because it's not as a, it's not a straight stitch. So you have to be kind of careful with this part. So I picked as much as I could and then I'm pulling away some of that fusible no show so that I can trim it up. These steps aren't necessary, but it's something that I always do because I feel like it finishes the garment better. Now I'm going to do cloud cover just to prevent those itchy stitches from being right on the skin, which, I mean, this is a sweatshirt, so my girls will probably wear it with a tank top or something underneath, but you saw me iron the front side. That was because I was fusing the fabric, so there it is. Happy Halloween! If you would like to purchase one of these sweatshirts, there will be a link below the video as well as all the products we use to create this project. We also have a boy design available for this sweatshirt that we will be creating a video for and posting on our website. So if you want to order that, it'll be up there soon. Thanks for watching, and we hope you have a great day.